Hi, welcome to Juice Bar. Today we're gonna mix an original cocktail called Is. So today we're gonna mix an original cocktail. I'm calling this cocktail Is after the lost city of French mythology and it's gonna be a variation on the cocktail called Atlantis which I found out on punch.com and it was originally made by Miles Macariet, the Kimball House and Watchman's in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, I changed quite a few things but let's get down to mixing it and then we are gonna talk more about the details. First of all I'm gonna freshly squeeze some pineapple we are gonna need 30 milliliters of this. So 30 milliliters of freshly squeezed pineapple juice. Then we go on with a few dashes of Angostura, I will say three. We have to add some spice to this cocktail. Then we continue with Madeira, fortified wine from the island of Madeira, which is there in the area where some mythological legend tells of the existence of the land of Atlantis. And this Madeira is uh, from Justino's, it's made from uh, Tinta Negra's grapes. I think it might be closer to a rainwater, it's medium in its sweetness. It has a good level of acidity. And now, I would suggest if you follow this recipe and you're mixing this drink, give this mixture a try. because this is pretty delicious but I had quite some problems to find the right spirit to match to this juice Madeira and bitters mixture after a lot of research I landed on this special rum this rum is a single cask from Brazil aged 8 years it's made in the Epris distillery it's 53 0.2% ABV. Now the characteristic of this rum that makes it ideal in this case, it's aged but not too much. It doesn't develop all those caramel flavor, chocolate notes of some normal molasses made rum and also overly aged. It's also not dark but that doesn't really matter. It keeps a good sharpness. It has a bit of agricole funk and yes character to stand up to this mixture so i think what you're gonna look for in a distillate to add to this base is gonna be alcoholic strength yes to be more than 50 percent i would say sharpness and spiciness and this rum is everything and is just really excellent and that's why I'm gonna use it in this context. Another alternative might be to use rye whiskey, but the rye whiskeys I have, they are all either too weak, too sweet, too licorice, too much pine note, too chocolatey. I don't have the right rye whiskey for this context. But now that I said that, let's give this a good shake and let's go let's double strain in our shield cool Let's decorate with a slice of pineapple. And there you go, an is cocktail spelled Y-S. Cheers.
this is really good. It's a good mix of tropical, a bit of spice, a bit of acidity from the Madeira. It's still on the dry side. Of course, this cocktail is made by your choice of main spirit. And this cocktail highlights this single cask Brazilian rum perfectly with these notes, a bit of agricole. In fact, we don't quite know how this uh, rum is brewed. I'm not sure if it's made from sugar cane, sugar cane juice, molasses, or something in between. It's really good and interesting, and it stands up great to the other ingredients. If you can find the right spirit for this cocktail, this is an excellent treat. Also a great way to use Madeira. So if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, comment down below, share with anybody you like and don't like. Shake yourself a pineapple Madeira rum drink and hopefully I will see you next time. Cheers. So is, is this uh, mythical land in the tale of old? But more importantly, is the name of a 1972 album by progressive rock band Balletto di Bronzo. Il Balletto di Bronzo was a progressive band from Italy. They were really weird. The vocals were pretty harsh and acquired taste I would say, really technical and they pretty much produce only this album which is pretty good though. I, I always enjoyed this uh, East album in that really quirky 70s prog that was popular in Italy at the time. There was great things made in that era in this style of music. But East is also the name of a 1987 video game, a role-playing game, kind of like Zelda, the first Zelda, like Link to the Past. It was made for PC Engine, a 8-16-bit console from Japan, but that was the first one to play CDs. So, while the console itself didn't have the power to exploit all the data that were available on a CD, that would be what the first PlayStation will do a few years later. What they will do with a PC engine, they will just put the game in a tiny section of a CD and the rest of the CD was the soundtrack. And so you had these amazing soundtracks for video games on PC engine. And the East one was a great one. Now, I think there is a connection, or maybe I thought there was a connection between the game and the Balletto di Bronzo album. In 2004, and thanks to the Wayback Machine of Archive.org, I was able to find it again, I wrote a blog post where I was comparing two passages of the music from the video game to the music from the album. And I think there are some similarities. At the time, I was really sure the video game composer was quoting the Balletto di Bronzo album. But now, listening to it again, I think it's more dubious than I thought. There are similarities, but you be the judge. Let me play this for you. First, there is the original passage from the East album by Balletto di Bronzo in 1972. Here you go. And now, here is the passage from the video game. What do you think? I kind of wish to think that the composer of the amazing video game music of the 1987 video game actually knew about Balletto di Bronzo. 
and it's possibly new because Italian progressive music was really big in Japan and it's still big nowadays sometimes I see all bands uh, getting another chance to be big in Japan well relatively big they do a concert here in Japan I, a few years ago was PFM there was uh, I think uh, Banco del Muto Soccorso so a few bands still have a chance to have a concert in Japan even so many years after the 70s <laughs> and also think it's possible a composer of this once they gave him the task to make this soundtrack he went back and researched everything that was called this and basically he only found out this album by the progressive band Il Balletto di Bronzo from Italy he listened to it and then he thought to, to put a little quote in his composition that's the cool explanation and I like to think that's true by the way, I actually saw Il Balletto di Bronzo live in the 90s. Gianni Leone, the keyboard player and singer of Balletto di Bronzo, refounded the band in the 90s and was touring with it. And I went to one of his concerts, I think by Lake of Garda, somewhere there. And it was really good, the concert. But the guy was really weird. At some point, I remember he got a stamp and he was going around the crowd and trying to stamp the stamp on the chest of guys in the crowd that was really weird it freaked me out really bad and i guess at the time i was also more shy than i am today and more scared of contact with other people so i guess i look like oh what are you doing man and uh, I think he looked at me and then he did an approach further. He goes like, don't, don't, don't touch me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the concert was good. I also saw Le Orme live in the 90s. Another progressive band. But that would be another story. Cheers.